Thor B or not Thor B? That is the question. Are you an everyday nerd? Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next episode. Yo, welcome back to Your Everyday Nerd, the B-Sides Edition. I'm your host, Zack Snyder. And on the B-Sides, we take a look at things that are in our backlog and just uh, try to do them in shorter, unsponsored episodes. We're getting rid of Backlog Wednesday, everybody. It's, it's gone. It's just, it's, I hate the name. I always hated it. We're doing B-Sides on Wednesdays. Get hyped for that. So anyways, let's continue our Marvel Cinematic Universe rewatch with Thor. Throughout the span of the MCU, it's clear that some characters, while well, they have gone through some extensive growth character-wise, for the most part, their personalities and everything like that are still the same. People like Tony Stark and Steve Rogers and Bruce Banner, even though Bruce Banner changed his face and, and, and everything else. Either way, when it comes to Thor, there's nobody else in this universe that has changed quite as much as he has. Not only has he gone through multiple tragedies within his three main films, but each of these films also feel completely different to each other. And that's why the original Thor is almost a forgettable movie. Now it's not bad, and I'll be honest, I was a bit apprehensive to rewatch this film because I didn't remember anything about it and I was kind of worried it was going to be bad. But for the most part, I really enjoy the first Thor movie. At its core, Thor is a fish out of water mixed with some Shakespearean elements and a superhero movie. It also has the introduction to some important MCU characters, and, and it also has some very boring, unimportant characters. Now, most people might not realize this, but Thor was in production hell for almost a decade, so it's a surprise that we even got this film in the first place. But finally, in 2011, Kenneth Branagh, who is well known for directing and acting in Shakespeare films, which I actually really enjoy his work, directed Thor. This is why Thor feels Shakespearean at times, and it's also why the movie has some really great direction. The introduction to Asgard, and for the most part, the inclusion of the Asgardians is really great. With the other three MCU films being set on Earth, and with most of the MCU films being set on Earth, it's very refreshing to have a film outside of Earth. Well, at, at least for part of the film, because there's only 30 minutes of this, and, and then when Thor is banished to Earth, we too are banished to Earth with him. And that wouldn't be that big of a problem if Earth in this movie wasn't super boring. So when Thor is banished to Earth, he meets this group of scientists who are trying to prove the existence of the Einstein-Rosen bridge, which is this hypothetical bridge that contains one plane of existence to another. Think like multiverses, that kind of thing. But this movie uses it as a way to explain the nine realms and how Asgard is connected to Earth. This group of scientists involves an old man that nobody really cares about, I can't even remember his name. Kat Dennings, who nobody cares about and is annoying, and Natalie Portman, who, while nice to look at, is just kind of boring in this film. I, I don't know. It's weird to me because a lot of the female characters in the MCU are actually done really well. And while Natalie Portman's character isn't particularly weak, she's actually a really intelligent scientist. It, she's just boring, and I never really believed her relationship with Thor. As far as the other characters go, Loki is good, although he's not really quite that same character that we love in future films. A lot of these characters act like they are in a Shakespeare film. Again, that has to do with Kenneth Branagh. So I, I tend to like the overall acting in this film fairly well. There are the other four main Asgardians that are Thor's and Loki's friends, and they end up being a decent part of the movie. Unfortunately, they're super forgettable, so I don't remember any of their names. And uh, yeah, I didn't just, I just didn't care. As far as the actual plot of the movie, it is pretty much a standard superhero plot. Thor is hyped to be king. Loki is jealous of Thor. We find out that Loki is adopted. Thor gets super over hyped to be king. And then when uh, Asgard is attacked by some frost giants, he ends up going sicko mode on a bunch of them. And uh, Odin doesn't really like this, so he banishes him to Earth. But after meeting Natalie Portman's character, he learns what it means to be humble and caring, and so he's deemed worthy once again, gets his hammer, kills some bad guys, doesn't quite become king yet, because daddy getting ready to get off his throne yet, and we, we see that the movie is set up for the Avengers, with the inclusion of Hawkeye, even. Overall, Thor is a fine film. I did enjoy a good part of it, especially the fantasy aspects of it, again, 
compared to other phase one films. This is pretty much the best part about it. But at the end of the day, when you're catching up to see Avengers Endgame, I wouldn't necessarily say that you have to watch the first Thor movie. Thor Ragnarok, sure. <laughs> We're going to talk about Thor in the Dark World very soon. But when it comes to the first Thor movie, I think that it's okay if you include it in a rewatch. I don't think it's necessary. I don't really have that much of an intention to rewatch this in the future. If I'm like, yo, I want to watch a Marvel movie, but I want to see one that I haven't seen that much. I might pick up Thor, but again, it is kind of forgettable. Some of the characters are annoying and forgettable. And at the end of the day, it's just a fine film in my opinion. But anyways, that's all the time we have for today. If you liked the video, go ahead and hit that like button. If for whatever reason you did like it, you can hit that dislike button. Let me know down in the comments what your thoughts on Thor are. And let me know which movie you're excited for me to cover soon. Because as you can see, we got them all. We're doing this little putting things in the videos now. And I'm, I'm a big fan of that. We got a lot to cover before Endgame. And Captain Marvel just came out recently. We got a lot to cover before Endgame. Get hyped. But anyways, go ahead and subscribe for more of your everyday nerd. And I will see you tomorrow. Goodbye.